All right, hey everybody. It's been an exciting day and I am getting some fresh air to clear my mind and think about it. So, taking a big step back, let's think about what Sam Altman leaving OpenAI means for AGI. So Sam Altman is going to Microsoft. He's first and foremost a business guy, but he's a very charismatic leader and he's got a clear vision, which you might say, okay, well, he's not the technical expert, uh, so therefore it doesn't matter, but that's not necessarily how things work. As a inspirational technology leader myself with some of my various projects, like the ACE framework and the, and the uh, Agent Swarm project, I will say that, that charisma and vision are absolutely a really critical set of skills and abilities to organize labor um, and, and to inspire people to get things done and to reach higher. Um, and so that is kind of like, it's kind of like the same thing as like why Captain Picard was such an inspirational leader is because like collectively the crew that he attracted, the level of expertise is what made him the leader that he was and vice versa. It's a two way street. So that's one thing to keep in mind about Sam Altman, you know, good, bad, ugly. Um, you know, I've, I've of course voiced some, some criticisms of his approach and his mentality in the past. Nobody's perfect. But as more information comes out, it seems like the, the characterization that Ilya Sutsk ever made it just a grievous miscalculation um, is kind of an accurate uh, representation of what happened. And I think, I think uh, shortly after I made my last video, something like 80% of OpenAI signed a letter like asking the board to resign and to bring Sam back. Sam's not coming back, so OpenAI is going to crater. Um, and as they said, like OpenAI is nothing without its people. Well, if 80% of the people leave, some of them are going to go to Microsoft. Some of them are going elsewhere. I've heard on the grapevine that many of them have, have already been applying. Um, and of course, you know, talent poaching is something you can expect. So I think that, I think that open AI is just dead, like dead in the water. Um, I'm not sure how the, how the, uh, how the contract works between Microsoft and open AI, but basically if open AI can't deliver, I suspect that Microsoft has like right of first refusal to, to purchase their, their assets. Um, which if that's the case, then, you know, the net effect is Sam Altman still gets most of open AI just under the Microsoft banner, which of course, like that runs directly contrary to a lot of stuff that he has said about incentives and, and that sort of thing. So it's like, yeah, that kind of proves the point of like, okay, you said something about nonprofit and all sorts of things like that. So yeah, money talks though. That's, that's like, follow the money, money talks, um, now, I, I, obviously, I don't, I don't know whether or not Sam is doing it for the money, but other people sure as heck are. Um, and that's kind of like we're having your head in the clouds and saying, oh, well, money won't matter in the future. Money matters today, bro. So, okay, so that's kind of setting the stage. But what does this mean for AGI? As I've said uh, recently, um, one, something like 90 plus percent of all the research that's leading to AGI is open source. It's done by universities like Stanford. It's done by Microsoft Research, which publishes it open source. It's done by Meta, which does a lot of open source. So like a majority of the research that's leading to AGI is public anyways, who cares? Um, now, that being said, the big companies are the ones with the money to train the frontier models. They're the ones, and it's not just, it's not just the training cost, it's the hundreds of employees of, of top talent, some of whom are paid millions of dollars per year to also build those 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 frontier models. So that's not to say that like, oh, well, just because 90% of the research is open source, anyone can do it. That's not the case. Um, it's kind of like the same reason that um, when India and China first started uh, industrializing very quickly, they kept having buildings and, and bridges collapse because they, they, they had technically studied, you know, uh, civil engineering in the West, but they didn't have the in-house expertise. And so they followed, you know, they followed the blueprint in the textbook, but they didn't have the, the firsthand experience to know how to do it right. Um, and so likewise, I think that you'll probably see the same kind of thing where that last 10% is the expertise that only people that have, have a proven track record will be able to do it. So the, where the talent goes, this is gonna result in kind of what, what you might think of as a massive amount of cross-pollination. Because now that OpenAI, it looks, to me, it seems like a foregone conclusion that they're going to implode. Um, it seems like it's a foregone conclusion that they are going to um, get scattered to the four winds. 
which means that that expertise, that last 10% is going to go to Apple, it's going to go to Meta, it's going to go to Google, it's going to go to Microsoft um, and NVIDIA and everywhere else. But also the thing is, is yes, some of these people are experts and, and some of them are like there, there is definitely a scarcity of like frontier model experts in the world. You know, there might be a thousand frontier model experts in the world. There might be fewer than that. I don't know. Um, so, but at, at the same time, you know, two or three or four years ago, there were not a thousand frontier model experts. These can be like, you can create more experts over time by investing in the education and finding the people with the right skills and the right, you know, disposition, and then ensuring that they get the experience. Um, so that's, that's going to be, it's, it's a slow thing because the number of people who are just intrinsically capable, like they have the math background, they have the, the intellect, the wit to learn these things is going to be limited, but the, the, the simple fact of the matter is there will be more uh, frontier model experts this time next year than there are right now. So that is, that is a temporary constraint. Um, it's still a major constraint, just like, uh, you know, how there's always going to be, you know, the top hundred experts of, you know, nuclear energy or quantum physics in the world. There's always going to be kind of a, a gradient or a set of ranks. Um, but it's not it, just because OpenAI implodes doesn't mean that those experts suddenly don't exist. And in fact, the cross-pollination that we're going to see means, I think, that they're going to get even more valuable experience and they're all going to be even smarter because now they're going to get, they're going to, they're going to leave the open AI uh, culture and go get experience at other tech companies like Microsoft, like Google DeepMind, like Meta, like Apple. And so that cross-pollination is going to be good, not just for the companies, but the individuals, the actual experts who are driving um, the, the, the thing forward. And so... Net effect, like like I said, I'm 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 pretty confident that this is actually good for both AGI and for safety. Because again, OpenAI under Ilya Sutskever was very tight-fisted, and and he Ilya Sutskever said many times, this needs to remain closed source. It needs to be a very small group of people. Um, and it's coming out that like he had a very kind of peculiar take on this stuff. And I have been like. Open source, open source, open. And now I'm not saying like release the weights for everything, you know, all frontier models up front. But I think this this proves uh, by and large that uh, that this information wants to spread. There is a tremendous amount of energy and money behind it, and all of the other companies are going to benefit. And I think that in this respect, this will benefit all of us downstream. And I know a lot of you are very skeptical about mega corporations, and I agree which is why I talk about a new social contract where we need to empower the government to also uh, police these companies a little bit better. Um, but that's a whole other topic of conversation. I hope you're not hearing the uh, siren in the background. There's a highway just a quarter mile that way. Um, anyways, so, uh, okay, the fire truck is gone. There is no one on the road right now. I don't know why they were blaring their horns and sirens like that. Anyways, so, all right, so principle number one, there's there's plenty of AI experts and there's going to be more and they're going to learn from the from these changes. That's net effect a good thing. They're going to get exposed to different cultures of safety, of corporate cultures, of profit motives, which is a good thing because they're going to learn. Um, so there's going to be more frontier model like AGI experts and they're going to be better AGI experts because of this. That's a good thing. Um, between all the different competitors and their different uh, dispositions towards open source, Google DeepMind publishes plenty of open source stuff about frontier models. Likewise for Meta, likewise for Microsoft. Uh, OpenAI was probably the least open source of all of them, honestly, other than Apple, because you know Apple is like, they're patent crazy. Um, but I think that this is gonna be a good thing because now there's gonna be a lot more cross collaboration between all the different shops. And what I mean by that is, is, is you know, because some, some of the papers, like, you'll have authors from Google DeepMind and Microsoft Research. Um, I think that we're going to start seeing a little bit more of that, I hope, um, because they're going to realize we are stronger together. And uh, also all these people, all the former, the, the open, open AI alums, they all know each other. They're going to still talk, right? They're, they're of course, going to sign NDAs. Um, so there, there's certain things that they won't be able to share, but they have those relationships. They have those social relationships, which will um, help kind of stitch Silicon Valley together, um, even if not an, on an official capacity, on an unofficial capacity, because this whole thing is just too compelling. This is one of the things that I think everyone agrees on is that the ramp up to AGI and superintelligence and whatever else is coming is far too important 
um, for one closed group to do, and it's far too compelling to ignore. Um, and so the, the kind of the last point that I'll leave you with is the implosion of open AI proves to me unequivocally that one small group cannot handle this, should not handle it. It never should have been just up to open AI. Open AI. It, was, it should never have been the responsibility of a small cloister group to say, we are the only ones that can do this. We are the only ones who can possibly do this responsibly. That was very vain. Um, and that was very uh, kind of um, short-sighted, let's say. That's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use that term to be charitable. It was very short-sighted and it was very vain. Um, and so I think that this just shows like, yeah, if you want democratic inputs to AI, it needs to be a conversation not just with open AI, it needs to be a conversation of all of the tech companies. It needs to be a conversation with all of, all of us humans, all of us citizens, all the governments. That's what democratic inputs means. It's not some tech solution where you have some, you know, form or whatever, like, Democratic inputs means building consensus through public discourse, right? Like ancient Athens figured this out with the Agora, right? Like you go and, and you have your public debates, which is why I'm here on YouTube, honestly. So, all right. Well, that's my rant for the day. My second rant for the day. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Have a good one, et cetera, et cetera.